Here we are in a native woodland halfway between Dublin and Galway. It's the only native woodland that you will pass on that route. So it's rare, it's an oasis of biodiversity. Many uncommon plants and animals uh, find a refuge here. It survives because it's on an esker, an esker ridge. It's 29th of April, it's peak season uh, for the plants down on the woodland floor um, before the light, before the tree canopy closes over uh, as summer approaches. And in this series we're going to look at just five species that um, represent this flora. Now this is the native bluebell, many people's favourite woodland flower, and at this time of year it really is a sight to behold. It's a slightly violet blue and this uh, wafts of intoxicant perfume. Flowers are nodding, hanging down, and it's a one-sided spike, and the petals form a tube, and then at the tip the petals curve up. So it's unmistakable, or is it? There is another bluebell and that is widespread in gardens. This is the Spanish bluebell, but it's also becoming naturalised in Ireland. In this one the flowers point upwards, uh, they're not nodding, and the um, flowers are arranged all around the spike instead of being on to one side, as in the native species. So, it, But they hybridise and the hybrids are fertile and back cross. So does it represent a threat to the future of the native bluebell? It, that is a real question. So this is the wood anemone, and it's the only native species in a large genus. There are many species of anemone in gardens. Um, an attractive flower ranging from pure white to um, flushed pink or even purplish pink. And it's a very simple flower in terms of construction. You've got um, a ring of petals, um, no separate sepals, and then you've got a large number of stamens, the male parts, and then the centre you've got a cluster of the carpels, which are the female parts. It doesn't produce nectar, um, but insects visit it for its pollen. It belongs to the buttercup family, and like many members of the buttercup family, it has an acrid taste and it contains poisonous alkaloids, and it is in fact poisonous to livestock. And here we have a violet by a mossy stone, half hidden from the eye. And the violet is a symbol of modesty. There are about eight species in Ireland that are quite tricky to tell apart. The spectrum of colour. Um, this is the early dog violet and the spur is a deeper colour than the petals and it's almost violet. The other one that you find in woods, the common dog violet, is closer to the blue end of the spectrum and the spur is pale, it's almost white. So when they're in flower they're easy enough to tell apart. Now this violet has already set fruit so it's been cross-pollinated, but if they don't get cross-pollinated, they have a fallback. They, later in the season they produce a different kind of flower which never opens and which is automatically self-pollinated. So they are guaranteed to set seed one way or the other. So this is the wild strawberry, uh, a modest looking plant and not terribly distinctive in flower, with wide open, pollinated by a variety of insects, including the hoverfly. It has a look-alike, which is the barren strawberry, and um, at this time of year you can tell them apart by the leaves. Um, but of course, as summer advances, the important distinction becomes clear. The wild strawberry produces this um, bright red, scarlet, delicious fruit, um, much stronger flavour than the commercial strawberry whereas the barren strawberry doesn't produce anything edible. The, it's been esteemed in Ireland since ancient times. We'll find uh, seeds of the wild strawberry in excavations from Viking Dublin uh, over a thousand years ago.
Now, this is an orchid. And what an orchid. This is the early purple orchid, Orchis mascula, and it has this rich um, purplish red, uh, quite large flowers in a spike, and a long spur at the base of each flower that would contain the nectar, and then the lip where the uh, pollinating insect would land. Perhaps the most intriguing feature of this um, plant is not to be seen. Uh, it's underground. Um, it has a pair of tubers which have been likened uh, to a pair of testicles. Um, and this has given rise to some intriguing um, notions about its uh, use as an aphrodisiac. Um, I can't show you because it's illegal to dig it up. It could cause offence, and anyway, it, all claims made for it are completely unfounded. But it is a beautiful plant.